Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and this short video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. First we are going to talk about the borderlands. During the previous night and this morning the Ukrainians made more attempts to cross the Russian border and to establish control over some towns and cities. For example, the very heavy clashes were spotted in the area of Tyotkina. The Ukrainians were using a significant number of armored vehicles and infantry, but the Russians managed to bring reinforcements and reserve closer to the line of combat contact and the Russians managed to repair the Ukrainian offensive. As a result of clashes, the Ukrainians had losses and were forced after a very short battle to fall back towards the Ryzhivka. Also, the clashes were taking place uh, on Bel in Belgorod direction in the vicinity of the village uh, by the name of uh, Spodarushina. The Ukrainians also made a lot of attempts to attack. The Russians were controlling the situation uh, during the previous day and this morning they were uh, discovering the Ukrainian forces were tracking the Ukrainian movements and were bombing and attacking the Ukrainians with different types of weapons, with artillery forces, with mortar forces. The Ukrainians, when morning uh, came, started offensive. Uh, there were a few waves of attacks, but most of the waves were repelled by the Russians, and the Ukrainians, having losses, were forced to fall back. The Ukrainians lost a few armored vehicles, including Bradley armored personnel carrier. Furthermore, uh, when talking about attacks, we can start receiving some videos and photo confirmations of Ukrainian losses. In the vicinity of uh, in Belgorod region, we have geolocated video of destroyed Ukrainian armored vehicles, tanks, and engineering machine and equipment. As you can see, the Ukrainians were well prepared. It's very difficult to understand what was the purposes of what were the purposes of the use of engineering machine in this area. Maybe the Ukrainians were planning to build some bridges, or small bridges for, let's say, armored vehicles. Anyway, regarding the Ukrainian plans, most of the armored vehicles were destroyed even on the Ukrainian side of the border without any uh, possibilities to cross the area and to establish a stable foothold. But anyway, first of all, engineering machine, first of all, confirms that Ukrainians have plans to start building trenches, maybe fortifications, and for establishing the foothold on the Russian side of the border. During the previous night, the Ukrainians first started, uh, say, counter-artillery duels. On this video, we can see how the Ukrainians managed to discover the Russian multi-launch rocket system, and as a result of drone strike or artillery strike, that uh, uh, machine, that uh, multi-launch rocket system was damaged and destroyed. Uh, furthermore, we got uh, some updates uh, from Sivir's direction. Let's move further to the situation on the ground. The Russians increase activity of FPV drone strikes on the direction, which confirms that the Russians uh, are planning to start offensive very soon. Just yesterday, we were talking about the Russian uh, FAP and artillery strikes in the cities and towns like Fyodorovka and Razdolovka, and now we see the attempts from the Russian side to clear the area with FPV drones. So, very likely, today we're going to receive more updates. On this video we see the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian tank in the vicinity of Zvanovka and as a result of Lancet strike that, artillery, that tank was damaged and very likely destroyed. During the previous night we haven't received anything from Ivanovska, just the Russian artillery bombings and clashes to the west of Klishevka. Now, as you can see, according to the most of geolocations, the battle is getting better, the weather is getting better, and we see that the Russians have possibility to discover Ukrainian positions. The Russians are bombing and attacking the deep rear and the close rear of the Ukrainian forces. Uh, they are destroying, let's say, um, artillery warehouses, uh, let's say, temporary positions, and uh, on this video we see another destroyed mortar system in the stronghold to the west of Klishevka. Now we are moving to Avdiivka direction. We have additional updates. According to some Russian reliable sources, as a result of offensive operation, the Russians managed to establish complete control over the southern part of Orlovka. And currently, approximately, this is the uh, Russian control in this area. For now, we still haven't received any geolocated proofs of this progress, but very likely soon the progress, the photos will be posted and published. We have a Russian activity, increased Russian activity in Novomikhailovka Pobeda direction. During the previous night, the Russians published additional videos of destroyed artillery systems to the west of the uh, Georgievka-Maximilianovka.
к победу новомихайловкам. The Russians destroyed those artillery systems that Ukrainians were using to support their defense forces in the towns like Georgievka and Novomikhailovka. And after the Russians suppressed the artillery forces, they made more attempts to attack the Ukrainian positions. And as a result of those attacks, the Russians, uh, let's say, uh, developed and achieved success. When talking about Novomikhailovka, additional three lines and additional, uh, let's say, strongholds were captured. This information, as you can see, is confirmed by Deep State Map pro-Ukrainian map and uh, as you know Deep State Map uh, has signed agreement with the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine with the purpose to provide additional reliable information as fast as possible to the Ukrainian soldiers on the ground. So if we return back to on map, according to Deep State, currently the Russians control something like this on the direction. So which confirms, which means that the Russians establish control over the most powerful and st big strongholds in the area and now they have opened the gate and opened the window for further offensive on the northern part of the village. The Ukrainians during the previous uh, nights and days tried to slow down the Russians with FPV drone bombing. On this video we can see the FPV drone strikes against the Russian forces, which first of all confirms the Russian presence in the farms to the north. Very likely within hours or maybe let's say minutes the Russians will complete the clearing of the territory. Additional reports and updates are coming from Velika Novoselovka area and we see some acti increased activity. We see lots of uh, let's say Lancet strikes, we see lots of aviation strikes, lots of FAPs around Urajain and Staromayorska and today we got additional updates from the territory so all this uh, activity confirms that the russians do have some plans to renew offensive with the purpose to return control over the villages and towns they lost during the ukrainian greatest counter offensive on this video we see uh, let's say the strikes of toslam tower systems a little bit to the north uh, to the west of Velika Novoselovka, we have another episode of counter artillery duels where the Russians uh, left as the winners. The Russians discovered artillery forces, uh, M777 Hovodze, and as a result of artillery strike, the Hovodze was destroyed. During the previous night, we haven't received anything from Robotina. From the other side, we uh, continue, people continue updating uh, the uh, defense belts in the vicinity of Zaporozhye. We see that Ukrainians are trying to be very fast because they understand the risks of losing Zaporozhye. And very likely, according to a lot of reliable sources, the Russians are planning to attack on this direction. Now we're moving to uh, Nergadar and Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. We have additional updates. First, let's take a look at these pictures. These are cities satellite pictures of the water reservoir the top picture shows the situation in the area on the 7th of uh, September and the bottom picture shows the situation in the area on the 11th of March so as you can see the water start returning back to the area due to the changes of the uh, seasons of the year so which means that very unlikely the Ukrainians are planning to use this territory for some offensive operations towards Unergadar but from the other side we continue receiving updates of FPV drone bombing of Nergadar and Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, so the Ukrainians continue the clearing operation, very likely that they are planning to do something, but currently it's unknown what exactly they are planning to do. Anyway, we'll see what is going to be next. And the most important probable update is that the United States and the NATO, uh, NATO drones, uh, let's say reconnaissance uh, planes, are flying in the Black Sea, and uh, their main, uh, let's say, view is pointed towards the Crimean bridge, very likely the Ukrainians will try make to make more provocations and sabotage operation in, uh, in, operations in Crimea before the beginning or the end of the present elections of the Russian Federation. So we'll see what is going to be next. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.